Hi everyone, my name is Jane Brown and I'm the Sage and Tech Manager over at Calculata. In this video, I'll be going over some of the inter-entity functionality within Sage and Tech. Specifically, we're going to be creating an AR invoice that's tagged to one entity and we'll be collecting revenue on that invoice with another entity's bank account. If you're ever interested in learning more about Sage Intact, we have a blog with a series of topics that you can review here at computata.com slash blog. To start, I'll come out to my Sage Intact environment and I'll show you the inter-entity account mapping. Our inter-entity account mapping is how the system knows how to react when we create an inter-entity transaction. And in this example, we'll be focused in on entity 100 and entity 200. We'll be creating an AR invoice tagged to entity 100, and we'll be collecting payment on that invoice with a bank account that's owned by entity 200. So we'll come out to cash management, checking accounts, to view our one of our checking accounts here, specifically 200 underscore CHK. And this is just to show you that this specific checking account is owned by entity 200. Now we'll come into accounts receivable and we'll create an invoice that's tagged to entity 100. So we'll go ahead and add an invoice here. We'll select one of our customers and then we'll fill out the entry section of our invoice. We'll make this 850 bucks. We'll select the department. And then what's important here is the location that we're selecting. In this example, we're gonna go ahead and select entity 100 as our location, and we'll go ahead and post. When we're ready to apply payment to this invoice, we can click apply payment. And instead of using entity 100's bank account, let's say that we're gonna use entity 200's bank account, which we reviewed earlier. And let's say that this customer pays us the full $850. Now we'll go ahead and post this payment. And now that we've posted the payments, let's go ahead and review the impacts of that payment and what posted to the ledger. If we view our posted payment here for 850 bucks and we take a look at posting details, we're gonna see two sections here. The first is our general ledger journal. This is, just, this is just recording exactly what we saw on that payment screen. It's taking $850 out of our accounts receivable account and it's tagging that side of the transaction to entity 100 because that's what we tagged that AR invoice to. For the debit side of this account and the cash coming in, the system has reported this to entity 200 because the checking account that we received the funds into was an entity 200 checking account. Since the general ledger journal that's posted is hitting two separate entities, the system knows to automatically generate an inter-entity journal with a due from entity 200 and a due to entity 100. The system knows to do this because of the inter-entity account mapping that we reviewed earlier. This eliminates the need to create a manual due to due from and saves your organization quite a bit of time. 